It's 2020. You're locked inside of a room because you aren't allowed out. You open up YouTube and see a face you've never seen before. But it doesn't belong to a person. It belongs to a virtual anime character. But hold on. There's six of them. Hollow Lock. They have a voice. They're moving. Are these real people? Why is everyone donating so much money? Who are these people? What am I watching right now? Boom. I debuted on YouTube coining the term VTuber. Within just 10 months, she amassed over 2 million subscribers, paving the way for what has since exploded in popularity, with over 10,000 active VTubers across the globe amassing over 1.5 billion views per month by October last year alone. Welcome to one of the biggest financial business moves you've ever seen online, and all it took was a 2D anime girl. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Fiji, and for me to explain this virtual influencer phenomenon that is still taking over YouTube to this day, I'll have to break it into four simple parts. Number one, how VTubing started. Number two, who these VTubers really are. Number three, how much money they actually make. And number four, the dark truth and who's actually receiving this money. Like what these big business corporations don't want you to know. Now for my safety, all this information is speculation, but keep in mind, take what I say however you wish. Welcome to the dark truth about VTubing. How VTubing started. The beginning of VTube. It was 2019. A popular game called VRChat was exploding at the time. VRChat was a game where players could immerse themselves in a virtual reality world to just hang out and enjoy the space together. One YouTuber during this time really stood out to me in particular, and his name was Great Moon Aroma. He was one of those famous faceless YouTubers you hear so much about. But even though he didn't want to show his face, he still wanted to be seen. Moon wanted to find a way he could connect with his viewer on a personal level, and that is what he did. Moon's real face may have been hidden, but instead of showing himself, he put his VR chat character on the side of his screen, so while you're seeing the people in front of him reacting to his funny jokes, you could still see him too. This is likely the concept that spawned VTubing as we know today. Now this allowed for a little more of a personal connection than just watching a normal gameplay on a screen. It wasn't just him though. YouTubers like VR Lolathon and a few others were doing the same thing. A fan base for a very new niche that was never seen before was building at a very rapid pace, gaining thousands of subscribers and thousands of dollars a day. But this did not go unnoticed. Whenever there is money to be made, people will soon close in. At the time, VR technology was brand new itself. The Oculus Quest just came out that year and I myself went and bought one too. That thing gave me hella headaches, I returned it so fast. But this wasn't considered the VTubing we know today. A group of people were watching very closely to see how they could take this new success and turn it into a business. That same year, December 2nd, 2019, Hololive was made. This is the company at the center of our whole story. Damn, people move quick. What is Hololive, you may ask? Well, if we look up Hololive, according to the wiki, it is described as a virtual YouTuber agency owned by Japanese tech entertainment company Cover Corporation. In addition to acting as a multi-channel network, Hollow Live Production also handles merchandising, especially music production and concert organization. As of April 22, the agency manages 68 VTubers between four regional branches, totaling over 43 million subscribers, including several of the most subscribed VTubers on YouTube. In other words, the new cash cow has been found. It was time to make some money. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! Hololive, a virtual YouTuber agency, says they are responsible for managing 68 YouTubers. But who are these YouTubers? Are they AI? Real people? What's really going on here? To find out, let's take a look at likely the most popular VTuber to come from Hololive, Gargura. on this channel back in 2020, I was very curious as to what I was going to see. I joined my first stream, and to my surprise, I was greeted with a very normal, soft-spoken virtual girl playing video game. Well, a virtual anime girl. And to top it off, it was a real person. Like any other stream, Gar was playing games, reading chat, and engaging with her community. But what stood out to me the most was her donation. Oh my god. This was a brand new channel, right? I went ahead and counted all the donations I could see for the last hour. Total money made, one hour, $3,000. I've never seen this before. Maybe from the most popular Twitch streamers like Pokimane or Kai Sanat, but this was on YouTube and we have no actual idea who this girl is. Well, at least she's a real person, right? At least she's the one getting all the money and she should use it to, nah. I was very intrigued about these VTubers. I wanted to know more, so I kept watching and I ended up on a VTuber stream named Mori Calliope. That's how you say it. What the hell does that even say? You see, I joined her stream at a very random time. 
but this was when I found the answer I was looking for. She was just talking to her newfound fans, but she started to get a little deeper into her personal life and who she was. Now she never said her real name, but what she did say was that she auditioned for a role a few months back. A role? More specifically, a talent role for Hololive to become one of these VTubers you see now. She wasn't really sure what she was getting herself into, but she got the role. Very interesting. So I guess this is her official VTuber, right? She's a talent. She gets to be herself. Look how she wants. She even sings. Mori could do any- Mori Telopi E-N. Like English? It was at this moment I caught on. There was more channels exactly like this one. These aren't your normal creators. These are actors here to play a character. And if they were fired tomorrow and replaced by someone else, I don't think we would ever know. I'll go back to this later. Welcome to the online business of VTubing. How much do these VTubers actually make? From a business standpoint, I guess this was genius. Make a bunch of characters, get people to play the roles with all this money coming in. How much would just one of these VTubers be making? I believe I could answer this. And to figure this out, first we must know two things. What niche they are in and what their CPM is, AKA how much they get paid per thousand views. Let's take a deep dive. If we go to Social Blade and type in Gargura, bro, what the? The niche she is set to is gaming. Now these CPMs can be very broad, but I got a gaming channel myself. So let's take a look at the numbers. When it comes to gaming, depending on what game you're playing, typically your CPM will be anywhere around as low as $2 to possibly around 20. If you don't know what CPM, it means cost per mile. CPM is what the video makes total before YouTube gets its cut. But what we need is the RPM. This is what the creators take home once everything is finalized. Now I have my channel here. The game I play is Roblox, which averages an RPM of around $2.35. Off 118,000 views, I made $278. But I be swearing in my bids. So here's another reference. If we look at another Roblox channel here, they managed to pull in almost 50,000 views and made almost $400. CPM, 15. RPM, 8. If you look, she's mainly a streamer, but most of her streams are anywhere from 2 hours to 5 and sometimes even more. So we can assume her RPM will likely be around this range. So let's make her RPM 8. Now if we look at Gargara's views for the month, she's at 4.9 million. Mind you, she's a streamer. I'll explain what this means in a second. We do the math. If she is getting $8,000 for every thousand views, times that by five, we come out to $40,000. Now, this only includes the videos. Gar mainly streams after all. Based off the numbers when I watched her before, we can assume 3,000 an hour is a lot. So let's lowball her and say she only makes about 1,500 an hour. This month alone, she streamed for six days. Counting all them up, we have 17 hours total. This gives us an estimate of $25,500. Total monthly? $65,500. Now don't get me wrong, this does not include merch sales, paid sponsorships, royalties from songs some of these other VTubers made, but let's say $65,500 would be a bad one. But with all these things considered, Gar will likely be sitting around total $100,000 a month. And I'm telling you, they love this virtual girl. Her merch probably sell like woo to top it off. We don't even know if this is the same girl from when the channel started. The audience just loves the image. And if this is the same girl, if she's just a voice actor, how much does she actually make? <laughs> Perish. Part number four, the dark truth about VTubers. Now, like I said at the beginning, this is all speculation, but as loved as a VTuber like Gargura is, she's not necessarily a real person. She is a company owned product and 100% of Gargura, along with all 68 other VTubers are owned by Hololive. So how much does our beloved voice actor really receive? I'd say nowhere near the amount she's worth or makes. But if we assume she gets a percentage, even if it's just a measly 10%, 10% of $100,000 a month is 10,000. And that's if she's lucky enough to get a percent. If she's getting a set pay, assuming it was like any other normal job that we would have to apply for and get accepted, she could be going home with around $2,000 to $4,000 just looking at the average job income. But why am I giving such low numbers? The truth is, as authentic as these VTubers are, they are not real people. If we look up who Gargura is, you won't find her. Matter of fact, she probably isn't even allowed to have her own social media because if someone heard her voice, it would ruin the mystery behind the girl. To have this role, you must be under a contract of some sort. This entails restrictions on what you can say, how you can act, and what you can do. To dive even deeper, she has no external way to benefit off this character. She doesn't own her. There's no link to donate to this wonderful voice actor. She could only receive what Hololive pays her. To add on to that, these VTubers are likely on a set schedule. It is likely predetermined for what time they will stream, what they will do that day, and even if they aren't in the mood to stream for four hours, this is your job now. 
you work when the schedule says so, and you perform accordingly to what the contract says fit. Now each VTuber's personality is different, but I believe through planning and marketing, all their personalities were already set before they got the job. The real Gargura applied for a role, and she got it. But remember, she's a brand, leaving entertainment for us. But in the back of our minds, we will always know this is a company created character, unlike normal streamers. But the difference from a traditional actor, this character can be connected with and talked to in real time, creating an actual bond between viewer and streamer. And we don't even know her name. The dark truth is that who you're looking at and seeing on the screen is truly just an actor. I find Gargara funny, cool to just vibe out and enjoy her stream, but honestly, if anything was to ever happen to the actual Gargara or any of these other VTubers, they could easily be replaced. You will likely never know, and the show would just go on. <laughs> and that's if it already hasn't happened. I'm Fiji, subscribe if you haven't, like the video, tell me what you want to see next, and until next time, later days.